Let me be blunt. Despite my 15 years experience in web development, all my apps would look like this without some sort of component library. The truth is that most devs don't have the time, patience or design skills needed to create a polished UI from scratch. This is why most of the time, dumping data into an HTML table and putting a marquee on top is considered good enough for most of us. But the good news is that there are a handful of libraries which can make even a Java developer accomplish a decent user interface and Shad CNUI is probably the best tool for the job these days. So let's spend the next few minutes looking at what Shad CN is, how it can help you and review together the developer experience it offers. The first thing you need to understand is that Shad CN is not a component library. It is a tool allowing you to build your own component library. Most traditional component libraries ship as an NPM package that you install, import, and hope you can bend to your will. You get pre-compiled components with a fixed API, some theme customization options if you're lucky, and a bunch of CSS overrides if you're not. Sure, this might sound convenient at first, but the moment you need to make something behave differently, you end up fighting the library instead of building your app. This is what ShadCN is trying to solve through some of its core principles. First, everything is out in the open. The components you install aren't compiled or hidden away in some package. Instead, you get the actual source files in your project so you can rename variables, restructure markup, or replace an entire logic block seamlessly. The library is also focused on composition. Every component follows the same interface patterns, so once you've used a couple of them, the rest feel very familiar. And what's even more important is that you can add into your project only the components you need via the CLI. On top of that, all these components get carefully chosen default styles so you get a great design out of the box. But enough with the theory, let's see all this in practice. We'll start by creating an Astro project and add the Tailwind and React integrations, but keep in mind that you can add ShadCN in any existing project. We need to make sure our tsconfig file has an alias pointing to the source directory and then we'll simply run the init command. This is all on the config front. Now we can start adding components into our project. As I mentioned earlier, we can use the CLI to bring in components into our codebase. And I mean that literally. Once the command is executed, a new components directory is created in the project, and this is where we'll find the button component. Note that this is in our codebase, so we can modify this code, check it into Git, and treat it like any other piece of code in the project. Once we add it in, we own it completely. If we open the button file, there are a few things that immediately stand out. First, we have access to a list of standard button variants, which cover most common use cases right out of the box. Each variant is just a combination of Tailwind classes, so there's no mystery about how it's styled. And this brings us to one of the most important aspects of this library. ShadCN is leveraging the full power of Tailwind CSS. If you are not familiar with it, Tailwind is a utility-first CSS framework that gives you a massive set of pre-built classes for things like spacing, colors, typography, borders, shadows, and layout. So, instead of writing custom CSS for every style, you compose these classes directly in your HTML. In practice, a button style like this in plain CSS would actually end up looking like this with HTML and utility classes. Tailwind will then scan your code for used classes and it will generate a single CSS file with only the rules you actually used in your project. To be fair, there are voices against the utility classes approach and they're not entirely wrong. For some developers, having long strings of classes right in the markup feels messy and hard to read. Others argue that it goes against the idea of separation of concerns, since you're mixing structure and styling in the same place. And if you're used to writing semantic, reusable CSS, Tailwind can feel like you're repeating yourself a lot. The second important building block behind ShadCN is Radix UI, which offers a set of low-level, unstyled components for React. On their own, Radix components are intentionally bare-bones. However, they do provide the support for all the tricky accessibility, keyboard navigation, focus management, and state logic that you'd otherwise have to code and test yourself. So ShadCN is basically taking those barebones Redix primitives, wrapping them with Tailwind styling, and giving you production-ready components that look good and behave correctly out of the box. Back to our demo project, let's add a second, more complex component. Dropdowns are pretty common in any web app, so let's bring them into our project via the CLI. Again, at this point, we own the file and we can make any styling or behavior changes we see fit. Dropdowns come with their own API, so we can run our own code when various events are triggered and we can decide the entire behavior of the component. But this is just scratching the surface because ShadCN isn't limited to individual components like buttons or dropdowns. The larger pre-built UI sections called blocks are where the library really shines. Blocks are essentially ready-made interface patterns. 
Instead of starting from a blank page, you get a complete section that already looks good, works correctly, and follows the same conventions as the rest of your setup. Just like with components, you can add them in via the CLI and then fully own the code. With just two lines of code, you get a working authentication page in your project, so now you can't abandon your next step idea because you got lost in building the login form for the 10th time this year. And, of course, all these components can be either styled individually, or you can go for a more global approach and change the entire look and feel of your app through the theme system. So let's go ahead and open the global CSS file, which contains all the variables that can be used to customize the default look and feel of your components. You can either start testing and tweaking values in here, or you can use a tool like Twixian, which offers a visual interface for adjusting your theme without touching the code manually. And this brings us to another very important topic. The popularity of ShadCN helped an entire ecosystem grow around it. One such example, and trust me, there are many more, is Magic UI. Magic is a UI library built on top of React, TypeScript and Motion, which works perfectly with ShadCN. So, you get the point. All of a sudden, you have access to hundreds of more components built on top of the system you already know. Now, we can jump back into the CLI and add the Magic UI globe into the project. Then, we simply add the globe component in our code, and just like that, you have an animated, interactive 3D globe running in your interface with zero custom setup. But we can actually take things one step further with a tool like Tailark, which offers entire ShadCN blocks you can use to build any type of marketing page in a matter of minutes. ShadCN is the foundation you can expand as much as you need without ever losing control of your codebase. You own the code from day one, and that's what makes it so appealing compared to traditional UI libraries. It's also fair to outline some of its potential drawbacks. First of all, ShadCN is currently React-only, which might be a deal-breaker for some people. It is also deeply tied to Tailwind CSS, so if you dislike the utility classes approach, this will not be a good fit for you. More importantly, however, since you're owning the code, you're responsible for updating it when upstream ShadCN changes. So, at the end of the day, you'll have to pay a maintenance cost for the freedom of owning and fully customizing the components. But, maybe the most concerning aspect is that you are encouraged to rely heavily on third-party code. The ecosystem makes it really easy to bring in a lot of custom code, and this is a well-known vulnerability in the NPM ecosystem. Just recently, we had another incident where a malicious NPM package slipped through and injected crypto miners into production apps. Of course, this isn't a ShadCN-specific problem, but the model of blindly importing lots of code directly into your repo comes with a lot of security implications. So always keep that in mind when bringing independencies into your projects. Sure, we can't afford to always reinvent the wheel, but we should also avoid putting complete trust into every random package we find on GitHub or NPM. Let me know what's your favorite component library in the comments, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, thank you for watching.